Hi, my name is Kaori Yamada. I am an assistant professor at the Department of Pharmacology. We are studying the trafficking of signaling molecules to regulate angiogenesis in cancer and eye diseases. As we are studying angiogenesis, let me start with what angiogenesis is. The circulatory system is essential to supply nutrient, oxygen, and hormones to the cells and remove carbon dioxide from the cells to maintain homeostasis of the body. During the developmental stage, new blood vessels form from pre-existing vessels. It is called angiogenesis. The adult body has fully developed vasculature, so angiogenesis is limited only when needed, such as wound healing. However, if the balance is broken in the disease condition, massive angiogenesis is induced, for example, in cancer and blinding eye diseases. Cancer cells need oxygen and nutrients to grow. They secrete a growth factor called VGF, vascular and cellular growth factor, to recruit blood vessels that supply more nutrients and oxygen. Other examples of angiogenesis-related diseases are blinding eye diseases, such as wet AMD and diabetic retinopathy. Wet AMD is a leading cause of vision loss for all the patients in the United States. The hallmark of wet AMD is an upregulation of VGF, which induces neovascularization from colloidal vessels. The newly formed vessels are very leaky. Infiltrated blood cells and plasma induce inflammation and damage to the retina and ultimately cause vision loss. Both diseases are caused by VGF. So blocking VGF by its antibody was thought to be a promising therapy. However, some patients are not responding and repeated treatment decreased the effectiveness of anti-VGF drugs. Then the alternative strategy is switching the medication or combination therapy with the other drugs, which have different mechanisms of action. This is our working model. To develop the new strategy, first we need to know what's going on in the cells. Endothelial cells lining blood vessels sense the gradient of VGF, migrate toward VGF. The fastest cell becomes a tip cell to reach the group of migrating cells. The followers are stuck cells. To sense VGF from the environment, the receptor VGFR2 needs to be on the plasma membrane. However, VGFR2 is frequently internalized and moving between intracellular membrane compartment and the cell surface. We found one of the kinesin Kick-13B transport VGFR2 to the cell surface, and it is required for angiogenesis. So, to inhibit massive angiogenesis in the disease condition, current therapies are blocking VGF. Our strategy is inhibiting VGFR2 trafficking to the cell surface to prevent the response to too much VGF. KIF-13B is a kinesin family molecular motor in the cells. The cell has cytoskeleton, such as microtubules and actin filament to form the shape of the cells. Molecular motors like kinesins and dynins and myosins move on the cytoskeleton to transport molecules in the cells. Microtubules are like highway. Actin filaments are like local load. To transport molecules for a long distance, kinesins and dynins are important. Kinesins move to the plus end of the microtubules, which locate at the periphery of the cells. So, to find motors transporting VGFR2, we used VGFR2 as a bait and found binding proteins. 
histatin B was the only kinesin found by mass spec analysis to bind to VGFR2. Here is the data showing the role of histatin B. We stained VGFR2 on the cell surface. Before VGF stimulation, VGFR2 is localized on the cell surface. After stimulation with VGF, VGFR2 was internalized and disappeared from the cell surface and appeared again on the cell surface later. However, when we knock down kickstarting B from the cells, VGFR2 did not return to the surface. That means kickstarting B is required for VGFR2 trafficking to the cell surface. Based on the findings, we developed a small peptide chi, kinesin derived angiogenesis inhibitor. Chi disrupts the interaction between histatin B and VGFR2, thus inhibits VGFR2 trafficking. Chi selectively inhibits pathological angiogenesis, but it does not affect the survival of normal blood vessels. Chi is a cell permeable and water soluble peptide so it can be used as an eye drop for eye diseases. Here are three big projects in our lab to study the mechanisms of regulating Q13B mediated VGFR2 trafficking in vascular leakage. To study the role of VGFR2 trafficking in vascular leakage and cancer metastasis to develop our strategy to the drug market. For project number one, here is the in vivo evidence of the role of kickstarting B on vascular leakage. We injected Evans Blue via tail vein and injected PBS or VGF under the skin. In wild type control, VGF induced vascular leakage. In endothelial specific kickstarting B knockout, vascular leakage was inhibited. Similarly, injection of chi together with VGF inhibited vascular leakage by VGF. So how kickstarting B regulates vascular leakage? VGF induces activation of VGFR2 on the cell surface. Activated VGFR2 induces signaling in the cells to induce more trafficking of VGFR2 to the cell surface. In general, the activity of kinesins is regulated by phosphorylation and cargo binding. We have some preliminary data about kinase and phosphorylation of kickstarting B after stimulation with VGF. In this project, we will use inhibitors and siRNA of kinase and phosphodefective mutant of kickstarting B to study the mechanism of regulation of VGFR2 trafficking and vascular leakage. For project number two, we have shown that chi inhibits tumor growth in the mouse model. Treatment of tumor-bearing mice with chi significantly inhibited tumor growth and reduced the number of blood vessels in the tumor tissue as shown in the graph and immunohistochemistry. We have also shown that CHI treatment inhibits cancer metastasis in the mouse model after injection of melanoma through tail vein. Mice were treated with either control peptide or CHI. CHI significantly inhibited cancer metastasis in the lung. So in this project number two, we will use in vitro co-culture system of endothelial cells and cancer cells. Here is our hypothesis. Cancer cells such as UV melanoma secrete VGF. Kickstarting B mediate VGFR2 trafficking towards the VGF gradient so that VGFR2 accumulate near the cancer cells. 
then accumulated active VGFR2 induces vascular leakage so that cancer cells can transmigrate to metastasize through the vascular system. Using in vitro system with inhibitors and siRNA, we will study the role of VGFR2 trafficking to regulate vascular leakage and cancer metastasis. For project number three, we showed efficacy of CHI in the mouse model of wet AMD. This is laser-induced colloidal neovascularization model to mimic the disease progression in wet AMD. After laser burn, neovascularization was observed in control peptide-treated mouse eyes. But CHI treatment significantly inhibited neovascularization this is the strong evidence showing promising efficacy of CHI for wet AMD. Developing a new therapeutic option is beneficial for human patients. In this project, we will further study the stability, pharmacokinetics, and the toxicity of the peptide for developing the peptide for potential therapy. So if you join our lab as rotating students, you can choose one of the projects. Basically, we use in vitro system for all rotation projects. I want to limit one student per one rotation period to focus on one person at a time. We have a lab manager, two postdocs, two medical students, and one undergrad student in our lab. Our postdocs and myself can show you how to do each experiment. So even if you don't have any experience before, don't worry about that. These students also did not have any experience initially, but they are doing well and obtained scientific data for publication. Finally, our lab has continuous financial support and currently we have RO1 from NIH, which can support your project. If you are interested in joining our team, please feel free to contact me. Our lab locates on the fourth floor of Conrad B. Check out our website to see more information. Thank you.